Hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, for today's video, um, I thought we'd do something different <laughs> as a, I guess, book wrap up thingy. Um, I, have I done one of these before or not? Or have I just been thinking about doing it? I, I, I honestly can't remember. Um, anyway, so. I read Emma by Jane Austen. Now this is one of the chunkier ones. I'm trying to figure out where all the other ones are. Um, they're way over there. <laughs> Never mind then. So this is one of the chunkier ones. Where to even begin? Let's just read this blurb here. Okay, this is actually quite good. Okay, so handsome, clever, and rich. Miss Emma Woodhouse has no responsibilities other than a care of her elderly indulgence father. Having lost her close companion, Anne Taylor, to marriage, Anne Taylor was her governor. So Anne Taylor raised Emma and her sister. She sets out on an ill-fated career of matchmaking in the town of Highbury. So uh, Emma kind of sets Anne up with... What was his name? She set him up. She set him... She... <laughs> She did some matchmaking and uh, Anne Taylor married an older gentleman. Taking as a subject the pretty but dreary Harriet Smith, she manages to cause misunderstandings with every new tactics she employs. Precious and spoiled Emma is charming to all those around her but insensitive to her feelings to their feelings. So it takes her some time to learn her lesson and profit from spending less time worrying about how other people should live their lives and more time redeeming herself in the eyes of Mr. Knightley, her sternest critic. So basically when Emma's governor, go governess, governess, and uh, is married to whoever his name was again, I can't remember, I, I'm so stupid. <laughs> she, she finds a new friend as it were, uh, and she, Harriet. So there's this farmer, who I can't remember the name of, um, who fancies Harriet. And Emma's like, no, no, no. He is like the working class. He is not good enough for you. You need to marry rich, basically. Um, so she goes for, what is his name again? He's the priest or something, the vicar. Anyway, she goes um, and says, Harriet, this man fancies you. As it turns out, that man actually had no feelings for Harriet, thinks Harriet is way below her and wants Emma. And Emma's like, no, I do not want to get married. No, no. <laughs> Poor Harriet gets like heartbroken every other minute of the day um, throughout the book. Honestly, poor Harriet. <laughs> so Emma's very much like, she she's she's quite content, like just looking after her father, being like the lady of the house and not really going anywhere because her father is like afraid to go anywhere at all. Traveling, no, no. Emma hasn't even been to the sea. That's, <laughs> that's how far she's gone around the house. She's basically not left. But she's quite content with it. Um, she does have some aspirations of seeing other things and places and stuff, but she's still quite content being where she is. She does very poor matchmaking. She has done some good matchmaking in the past, but what she does for Harriet is... Oh, it's horrible. So, <laughs> as with classics seems to go for me, um, I get quite like into it in the beginning and then it's like, Ooh, well, I'm quite bored now. It's not really that I'm bored per se of the story. Well, usually it's not. It's more that the language in these old classics is a lot different from the language of today as it was. So it's it's the old English that gets to me. I mean, I can read it and I understand the words on the page, but there's like so many more things you have to think about. Um, it's like translating English to English. Basically, that's what it is. There's lots of words that kind of mean the same, <laughs> but 
back in the day, as it were, they had a different source of meaning to it. Um, I have no example uh, whatsoever, but there you go. After having finished this book, so I did quite like the book, I will say that, um, but I did find myself getting bored as it were, so I did have to like put it down for a bit, read, read a bit of something different, something completely different, and go back to it. Um, I wish I could be that person that just picks up a classic and just reads it all the way through without break. Um, well, as in break, as in picking up a different book. Um, not in one sitting. Well, maybe that too. But I'm not. Sadly, I am not. It's like reading Greek and I don't speak or read Greek. So, I thought Jane Austen. Jane Austen has, well not her herself, but there's been loads of adaptations of her books. Um, so I thought, you know what, let's just see if there's an adaptation for this that's available to me. Um, I found four, um, but three of them I had to pay for, and I was like, no. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, but there was one. So it was a four-part mini-series with... Who was in it? Johnny Lee Miller was in it and Michael Gambon was in it. <laughs> Those are the only names I remember. I Did I know any of the other actors in it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I knew any of the other actors. Anyway, I watched that. Four hours of an Jane Austen adaptation for Emma. I bloody loved it. Starting it, I was a bit like, ooh, <laughs> do I really want to watch this? Because there's this thing where <sighs> superior dramas and such isn't really my thing. I tend to watch a bit of it and then I get bored. No, like literally bored, not just like... Uh, what is this language but literally bored because it's all i don't understand it well i do but it's this class system that used to be i guess it still exists but it's more you, you can see it better but the class system of before so like all the period drama seems to be that there's not really a working class person there all people are just like rich and just do nothing all day and i kind of wish that was me but also not <laughs> and i'm like where do these people get their money from i don't understand it they just have money <laughs> And I may be a bit jealous of that, but that's a different story for a different day. So I started watching it and I was like, hmm, okay. Well, I know Johnny Lee Miller and it was interesting seeing him all aristocratic Jane Austen world style. Because the last the time I watched him in anything was elementary, uh, where he's Sherlock in a modern day Sherlock in America where Watson is a woman. Bloody love that show, I need to watch that again. I haven't seen the last series so yeah, I've gone off. Anyway, so watching him, <laughs> I was like okay, okay, or oh, I can deal, I can deal with this. Also, no, I've seen Michael Gambon as uh, something else after him playing Dumbledore. I think it's all in him Doctor Who. I'm going off again. Anyway, so, started watching it, wondered what the hell this was about because the beginning of the, the series wasn't what I remembered for the beginning of the book. It was and it wasn't. <laughs> it's sort of like a recap of what's happened and basically in the series the first things we see is like um, these two children from different families getting carted off because uh, the families they're living with aren't like rich enough to they don't have enough money to take care of a child so they send these kids off to other family members 
one of them goes to his aunt and the girl, I think she goes to a different family altogether. The girl who played Emma, she was so endearing that she just sort of like sucked me into the whole thing, which is good. That's what you want. You want to get into the, the show as it were. Her back and forth with Mr. Knightley uh, or Johnny Lynn Miller, <laughs> whichever, was hilarious and he's supposed to be like 16 years older than her which i found so funny there's definitely like in the story both in the show and in the book um there's this miscommunication and i was all all just 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 tell her just tell him just tell her just tell him just just say it <laughs> um and they do they say it but they don't say it and it's like <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I'm a fan of the miscommunication trope, um, but I don't think really, I'm not sure you can say it has that trope in it because um, they're just talking about different things, but they think they're both talking about the thing they think they're talking about. Does that make sense? I don't know. I guess that is the miscommunication trope. <laughs> oh, I'm so all over the place. Anyway, so for the book, I like the book, but as it tends to do with me and this kind of text, I get a bit like loop de doop, um, which I want to call bored. It, it is a for it is a some kind of boredom, but um, it's not actually boredom. It's just that my brain does not compute old English. It can only do old English for so 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 long. Um, so then, as far as the show, the show, I bloody love the show, I would have wanted to watch some of the other adaptations as well, but I'm not paying so-and-so extra just for this video, so I'm gonna have to wait until they're, like, free. This video is not making me any money, okay? <laughs> Besides the point, besides the point. Um, so, as far as the book and the show, I think they did a very... I think the show did the book a lot of justice. If, like me, <laughs> you have a hard time with reading classics, adaptations like that, Chef's Kiss. Um, I know there are adaptations, like for Jane Austen books and stuff. So, so let's say Pride and Prejudice, because I know that one. So there's this series, I think it's six parts that was made in the 90s with Colin Firth uh, as Mr. Darcy. And then there's the Keira Knightley movie one from 20, 2000 something. And I think this series with Colin Firth makes a lot more sense and is much more true to the book, not this book, another book, it's over there, uh, than the movie with Keira Knightley is to said book. So I know there are like adaptations that are true-ish to the books but they've taken liberties and shortened it or made very many changes. I can't say any specifics. So just for this adaptation with the Johnny, Johnny Lynn Miller series. Why am I calling it the Johnny Lynn Miller series? I don't know. But that series and this book very true to themselves so if you don't want to read the book watch this series it's like four hours of your life and you get to see people be silly and funny it's it's a good time honestly it's quite funny so as a whole bloody loved it bloody loved it i do think if i ever want to reread this book i'm gonna have a different edition because <laughs> i don't really like these i thought when i bought these editions of uh, Jane Austen books. It's a collection box set. Uh, I thought they were like, ooh, yes, mitchy matchy, wooty wooty, gold sprayed edges, lovely. Um, but the text, it's um, it's tiny and very dense on the page. I think I need a bit more room between the lines um, because reading it is like trying to go cross-eyed. Not trying to, you, I go cross-eyed um, trying to uh, read it and understand it. Also, if, I'm, I mean, I'm not that kind of person, but if I were to want to put like notes and annotations in this, 
this would not work very well. Um, I'd have to have all those um, see-through sticky notes to make notes because there's no room to write in these books. Let's give it a thumbs up. Also, can we appreciate that I've read two classics in a month because I read two Jane Austen books in January. Who am I? Who am I? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've read this book or if you've seen the same adaptation that I've watched um, or any of the other ones actually, have you seen any other Emma adaptations? Because I'm curious. I want to know more because I kind of like the story. I do like the story. Um, so yeah, do let me know. Let's have a little chatty chat and uh, I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Oh, bye bye.